Hey, we're back. 909 Big 550 KTRS. A couple weeks ago, I sat down with uh, Dr. Carol Bergman and Dr. Allison Benner, and they are audiologists, and uh, had a conversation about hearing, and uh, they said that I'm losing my hearing. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not. And they said, let's do a test. So I said, let's do a test for everybody, because how many times, when was the last time you had your, your hearing checked? So we're going to try something new here on the radio. First of all, Dr. Carol uh, Bergman and Dr. Allison Benner, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. You guys us. need to talk right into the microphone, because these are directional mics, not there's something wrong with my hearing. Um, you're audiologists. Correct. Which is different than just somebody, a salesperson, selling a hearing aid. Yes. Right. Talk about that for a moment because you, you can, you're not going to go to a doctor who's going to give you a pair of eyeglasses. You have to go to an optometrist. But when it comes to hearing, you can just be a salesperson selling a hearing aid. Correct. Yeah. Talk about that for a moment. So for an audiologist, you either have your master's degree or your doctoral in audiology, which is six to eight years of schooling. So we have that versus a dispenser technically only needs a high school degree and some hours underneath one of us. Um, so we have a lot more training so that we can diagnose and identify hearing loss versus just say, oh, you have a hearing loss, here's a hearing aid. Right. We don't know why. Um, hearing loss, you say, happens all ages, all – talk about people who are losing their hearing. So we're finding more and more of the younger generations because – we're such a noisy society. We're identifying noise-induced hearing loss in kids because they play in the band or they like to wear their headphones and their ears very loud. Uh, typical due to aging, that's going to be your grandparents. But there's just a lot of noise now, so we're finding a lot more younger people. My grandfather used to complain for years that he couldn't hear anything. He went to a uh, doctor, and they cleared out the wax in his ears, and the guy could, had, like, microscopic hearing after that. Is that odd, or does that happen often? That happens a lot. <clears throat> and when you come see us, that's something that we can identify and, and correct for. Uh, you might go to a hearing aid dealer, and they can't treat. So Right. Uh, how should you be cleaning your ears? Should you clean them every day? Should you clean them with – I clean my ears when I get out of the shower every day. Is that normal? It is, yeah. A lot is that, of people don't like the water in their ears, but don't use a Q-tip. Don't don't use a Q-tip. No. It's that old saying, nothing bigger than your elbow. So basically, <laughs> you want to put a tissue on your finger and just kind of wipe around. So don't use a Q-tip. Q-tip just shoves that wax further in there, and then you can't hear. Um, re So get a, a tissue and just, just dab it, more just or less. Just dab it, yep. Just kind of wipe that water out. That's most the reason why people like to wash it after their shower. So am I... Am I doing anything? Am I cleaning my ears at all? With the Q-tip? Yeah. Or not really. Not, you're just really. shoving it in there. The what? natural mechanism of the ear is to slough it out, right. and you're pushing it back. So the the little dab cleans it more or less. Yes. Yeah, because you're wiping it off. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. All right, good. Uh, also, is, is the stigma still attached to hearing aids? Unfortunately, I think it is, you yeah. know, because people still have that deaf, blind, dumb thought. Right. So... You know, the the manufacturers realize that, so they're trying to come out with hearing aids that are invisible or, you know, really cool looking, Bluetooth. So, and the younger people, you guys are used to having connected. You guys, connected. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like you saying me as you guys. Yeah, there you, you go. You guys are connected, so you, you, you're you used to having things on you now. So I think it's getting better. You told me, and you, you just mentioned Bluetooth. There are hearing aids with Bluetooth technology. Correct. Which Almost means, all of them now. Which means what? Which means, you know, when you're talking on your cell phone and you're in a noisy environment, that can be very hard to hear. So now you can have that hearing aid directly input your cell phone <laughs> into your ears or TV or iPod. So, so your t you can actually have your TV Bluetoothed into your earpiece in your, in your ear. Yes, correct. Uh, you also mentioned, you explained to me the speaker thing. Explain that thing. You have the microphone yes. on your on so your for lapel. lots of people, you go to a noisy restaurant, and even though you might have the best hearing aid in the world, you still can't hear the person across the table. So now they, you know, like at church or in a public facility where you have the speaker wear a microphone, then the hearing aid wearer can get that direct input and not have to fight that environment. So if you and I were talking, 
and you had a hearing aid on, mm-hmm. you would give me the microphone. I'd put it on my lapel. I would speak into the microphone, and then only your earpiece would, would then pick it up. Exactly. That so is, no matter how noisy it is, I right. still hear you. That's extraordinary. And and these things are smaller and lighter and better, and so they're less obtrusive. Exactly. Uh, they're better in terms of, they used to be just the background, and the regular noise was all the same. That's all changed as well. Exactly. All right, so let's do this. Let's We're going to have an we're going to have an ear test on air. We'll try. Okay, we're going to try to see. So what you're going to do is you're going to play the ear test into the microphone and I, I'm we're all going to play along together and and you tell me what we should hear and what we shouldn't hear and then ask me the questions and we'll go from there. Okay. All right. And then you tell me what kind of hearing aid I'm going to need when this Perfect. is all said and done. So one of my first questions would be is do you have ringing in your ears? I do have ring not currently. Okay, good. And and the voices are relatively low uh, this morning. But every once in a while, I do get a ringing in my ear. Okay. Do you have any family history of hearing loss? Except for my grandfather. Okay. No, we're good. Any ear surgeries? No. Okay. No. So those would be some of my top first questions because right. I don't want to get in there if, you've, if you're having problems. Sure. So we'll just play a sound, and since we can't do ear specific, just let me know if you hear it. Okay. All right. Okay. Here it comes. All right. can't hear that. I can barely hear that. Barely hear that. Okay. So we're looking for barely hearing. So we want what you hear 50% of the time. We want your softest level. Okay. So we'd kind of bracket and see where that is. And then we'd move to a different frequency or a different pitch. All right. So here's a higher pitch. I can. Yeah, it sounds like John Hadley's sports show. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then we'd find that one. And let's do more of a bass because that's where you get volume. Cannot hear anything. Nope. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. Okay. So we kind of try to find those speech sounds. So a bass, which gives us volume, and then those high squeaky treble pitches where people typically cannot hear those. That's where you get the clarity of your speech. Okay. So most the time and if you were under true headphones you would have a high frequency loss typically so i would typically so after that test i have a high frequency loss yes how bad well i would be honest i would say more of a a, maybe a moderate high frequency moderate high frequency with the way you responded is that normal for a 46 year old is that worse is that better it depends on your work environment. See, so you're under headphones, so right. you might be worse off than your typical 40-year-old right. that might work in an office. So depending on the noise exposure and what you're under all day, you it can vary. Very so you would. So. so I don't need hearing aids yet, or do I? I would put you through a full diagnostic evaluation to really evaluate. So I got trouble is, is what that you're telling me. That would be the next step. Yes. Both of you are saying yes. You're <laughs> going to be looking that way. You, both of you are going to look looking at me like yes. You're going to come, come on see. Down. You're going to come see me, and we're going to become very friendly over the next couple exactly. of years. Exactly. All yes. right. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's kind of typical, right? Yes. I mean, I, I'm not out of the norm. No. A 46 year old. I've been wearing headphones because they invented the Walkman when I was 12. So. Correct. Not that I'm a big music guy, but I live with headphones in my ear. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting stuff. And you're saying it's it's the high frequency, not the low frequency. Correct. Yeah. Most people think that they can't hear the lows, but that's where we get volume. And the biggest complaint is I hear, but I don't understand. Right. And that's those high pitches. Women, children. What's if uh, a husband comes in and says, my wife says I don't listen to her. Can you help him? I can help with hearing but listening totally different (laughs) all right fair (laughs) enough uh that's dr allison benner and uh, dr carol bergman who um uh are audiologists three locations in ellisville richmond heights and in saint saint charles so you just recommend come in for a free diagnostic test to free hearing screening free hearing screening to come and just Mm -hmm. see see where where you are on the chart and then go from there the statistic is the average person takes seven years from the time they find out they have a hearing loss before they do anything and we want to speed that up because there's no need to live in a world where you don't hear because of all the advanced technology exactly right you're done you're not you're not living to, to the fullest right um for whatever reason but come in and get screened maybe it's too much wax in my ear exactly we're kind of hoping that's the case right but if not 
I might be in the future for some hearing aids at, right. at some point. I want the Bluetooth one where my phone can go right into my earpiece. <laughs> Super that's, cool. That, that's that's what I want. All right. Uh, the website is uh, hearinghealthcare.org, hearinghealthcare.org, or uh, Ellisville, Richmond Heights, and St. St. Charles, 636-391-9622. That's the uh, main phone number, but hearinghealthcare.org to find out more. And you guys recommend don't go to a salesperson. Go to an audiologist because they can do the full screenings. Doctor, right. Doctor, thanks for coming in. Thanks Thank for, you for having, having us. us. You got it. 919, we'll come back, talk Rick Perry and the fact that KTRS is the only radio station in town to refuse the Texas governor's ads. We'll come back, take some phone calls, and talk about that next on the Big 550 